Hi, I am Dr. Selvaraj, your surgical educator from Malaysia. Welcome back to my series of surgical teaching video class. These are meant mainly for undergraduate medical students doing their surgical clerkship rotation. I promise you will become competent in clinical problem solving and surgical decision making if you are going to watch these videos over and over again. In this episode, I am going to discuss one more, I mean, video on 10 MCQs or epididymalsis, one of the causes for scrotal swellings. You all know the importance of MCQ throughout the world nowadays, both in the qualifying as well as in the competitive medical entrance exams, all of them are using invariably only MCQ for these exams. So I think I need not emphasize the importance of MCQs to any medical student. So in their exams, definitely they will face some sort of MCQ exam. This series of videos will give you a systematic view of revising the whole spectrum of general surgery topic by topic. Before going to discuss the 10 MCQs on epididymalsis, I want you to watch that particular video created by me. And then from this link, you can uh, pause this video, click this link, watch the video, and then you come back to this video. After watching the video and learn the content, now, okay, let us discuss the MCQs one by one. <coughs> but before going to the MCQ proper, I promised last week that I will include the corresponding the mind map also so that it is a kind of very quick review for you. So this is the epididymalsis. Yeah, they are discussing about ETO pathogenesis, the clinical features, that is the symptoms, this is sign, and then the diagnostic investigations, and finally, the treatment. So this is the format I am using for my mind maps. All mind maps, it will be the similar things. So easy to remember, uh, for a quick revision, this is very important, you can Pause the video and you can read everything in detail. Okay, now coming to the MCQ proper, MCQ number one. A 50-year-old male present with a painless swelling in the right scrotum that has been slowly increasing in size for the past two years. On examination, the swelling is located at the head of the epidermis. It is soft and transliminates. What is the most likely diagnosis? A. Varicocele. B. Epididymalsis. C. Hydrocele. D. Testicular tumor. The correct answer, of course, is epididymalsis because epididymalsis are typically number one painless, slow growing, and it is brilliantly transliminal swelling found at the head of the epididymis. Whereas if it is hydrocyl, the whole test is, <coughs> you can see the fluid everywhere. That is, fluid inside the tunica vaginalis that surrounds the testis. Whereas, in epididymal cysts, cysts will be separate from the testis. This is just above the testis, as if the patient is having a third testis. That is the typical presentation. The main thing here is, you have to differentiate epididymalsis from hydrocele. That's all. Varicocele is totally different. Testicular tumor is not at all a cystic swelling. It is a solid swelling. Okay, coming to FCQ number two. A 45-year-old man complains of a slowly growing swelling in his scrotum for the past three years. The mask feels like 
bunch of grapes and the testes can be felt separately. What investigation can confirm the diagnosis? A. Scrotal ultrasound. B. CT of the abdomen. C. Urine analysis. D. Doppler ultrasound. So among the four, the correct answer is of course, scrotal ultrasound. Scrotal ultrasound is the best answer. Scrotal ultrasound is the best imaging modality to confirm the presence of an epididymal cyst. Distinguish it from other causes of scrotal swelling. But Doppler ultrasound, there is no need for Doppler ultrasound. Because in Doppler ultrasound, you can also see the blood supply. That is not needed here. Duplex or Doppler ultrasound is the investigation of choice for tarsen testes, not for epididymal cysts. So epididymal cysts, among all these investigations, total ultrasound is the best answer. Coming to MCQ3, a 48-year-old male present with a swelling in the scrotum. On examination, it is lobulated, feels like a bunch of grapes. The testis is palpable separately from the swelling, and it is transiluminant. Which of the following features supports a diagnosis of an epididymal cyst rather than a hydrocele? A. Transillumination. B. Testis is not palpable separately. C. Cyst located above the testis. And D. Painful swelling. Among this, okay, the C is the correct answer. The cyst is located above the testis. Transillumination is positive in both the cases. Testis is not palpated separately, is also there. Testis is, I hear in epididymal cyst, testis is palpable separately. Oh, that is not the correct answer. It's not a painful swelling. So the correct answer is cyst located above the testis. I told you in the last thing itself, as if the patient is having a third testis, typically the epididymal cyst will be there just above the testis. So you can palpate the testis separately. Whereas hydrocele typically surround the testis and you cannot palpate the testis separately. <coughs> Coming to MCQ number 4, a 42-year-old male present with a painless swelling in the right scrotum. The swelling transilluminates and has a Chinese lantern appearance on transillumination because it is multilocular. What is the best management for a large symptomatic epididymal cyst? A. Aspiration. B. Antibiotics. C. Excision of the cyst. D. Observation. So among the four, the correct answer is, of course, C, excision of the cyst. Aspiration should not be done <coughs> for even hydrocele or epididymal cyst. Aspiration alone, alone is not the uh, treatment. But if it is very small cyst and it is not symptomatic, then, of course, aspiration can be done in, in a very small epididymal cyst. Antibiotics is not the correct answer. Excision of the cyst is the correct answer. Observation also not correct answer. Excision is the definitive treatment for large and symptomatic epididymal cysts. For small and asymptomatic epididymal cysts, you can use aspiration, but it should be done under very strict aseptic condition. You should not introduce infection into the, into the swelling. Aspiration is not recommended as cysts are often multilocular and tend to recur. So this is not actually recommended, aspiration. Coming to MCQ5, a 55-year-old male present with a painless, soft scrotal swelling that has been present for several years. <coughs> On physical examination, the swelling is transiluminant and the testis is palpable separately. What is the most likely content of this swelling? A. Blood. B. Clear fluid. C. Pus. D. Solid mass. So the correct answer is B. Clear fluid. Epididymal cysts 
typically contains clear fluid which allows them to trans eliminate during exam that is why because it contains clear fluid that is why it is trans eliminant coming to mcq 6 a 50 year old man present with bilateral painless scrotal swellings on examination both swellings are soft multilocular and trans eliminate the test is can be palpated separately what is the most appropriate next step in the management of this patient uh, a urgent scrotal exploration b conservative observation c aspiration of the cyst d surgical excision of the cyst so the correct answer is answer d surgical excision of the cyst because it is bilateral and symptomatic epididymal cyst are often managed surgically through excision especially if they are multilocular and symptomatic so multilocular means you cannot i mean do aspiration because you will aspirate only one locally so that is why uh, for uh, epididymal cyst aspiration is not indicated so coming to mcq 7 a 46 year old male complains of a painless total swelling swelling has been gradually increasing in size and is located above the testis testis is palpable separately on trans elimination the swelling shows a typical chinese lantern appearance what is the underlying cause of this condition the correct answer is this is a case of epididymal cyst epididymal cyst present with the characteristic features described it is painless palpable separately as if there is a third testis and with a typical chinese lantern appearance on trans elimination because of it is multilocular okay that is the reason so spermatocel also a cystic swelling but it is not trans eliminant because of presence of spermato <coughs> sorry spermatozoa inside coming to mcq number 8 which of the following is a typical feature of an epididymal cyst a painful b trans eliminant c irreducible d associated with hydrocele the correct answer is b trans eliminant explanation epididymal cysts are usually painless and trans eliminant swellings okay it is not painful it's not yeah it is irreducible is yes it is irreducible epididymal cyst is not reducible associated with hydrocel this is not relevant so the most important thing is trans eliminant that is the most important thing okay so mcq 9 which of the following is a common age group affected by epididymal cyst a under 20 years b 20 to 30 years c over 40 years and d over 60 years of course the correct answer is c over 40 years epididymal cysts are most commonly found in males over the age of 40 mcq number 10 which of the following conditions can be confused with an epididymal cyst due to similar clinical features a <coughs> testicular torsion b hydrocele c varicocele d spermatocele the correct answer is d spermatocele spermatocele is a retention cyst yeah uh, that also arises from the epididymis and contains spermatozoa because the obstruction of the vas deferens it is very common after vasectomy so it is some obstruction in the vas that is why it is a retention cyst whereas the epididymal cyst is a degeneration cyst it serves many clinical features with an epididymal cyst but it is not trans eliminant because it contains spermatozoa it is not trans eliminant that's what i told so 
some of my uh, viewers, they have asked the reference for all these, I mean, the answers. So from this episode on, onwards, I am including the references for these uh, answers also. So the reference number one, this is reference for epididymalsis, the characteristic feature and presentation. This is the thing. Yeah. And the reference for the diagnostic approach is from this paper. Reference for management of the epididymalsis, and this is the, this, this one. Reference for the age predisposition, which age it is occurring, you can find the answer. This is the reference. So reference for the differential diagnosis, you can see from this paper. And reference for epidemiology of epididymalsis, it is there in this paper. So hereafter, each and every video, I am going to include these references also. I request all my viewers, what else you want? Because I am making these videos not for us to know. It is only for educating the students. So what you want, I have to give. So please don't hesitate if you are having like, see, uh, last week I have included a mind map. This week I have included a reference also. These all, all add, it will add the value of these videos. So I request all my viewers to suggest something to improve these videos. So in due course, okay, it will be the best among all these uh, type of videos. That's what I want from you. Please give your feedback or any suggestions to improve it further in the comment section. So I told you already, I have off late come out of three books. Mainly all these three books are for exams <coughs> or for your assessment. So you all know MCQ, okay. Everywhere MCQ is the most commonest type of assessment. You all know. But you, many, some of you may be knowing ASCII also. That is objective structures, clinical exam only. Okay, that also you may be knowing. So it will be like this, different stations. You have to go through it in a circle. Okay, and I have written a book on MEQ, that is Modified Essay Question. In our institution, we are no longer using any essay type of question. We are asking only the modified essay question where uh, we can assess the clinical reasoning of all the students. So this also, I have written these three books. I have given the link to the Amazon stores. You can go there. If you want, you can buy any one of these books. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you think that these videos are very helpful, kindly share these videos in your social media. Kindly subscribe this video also. Kindly click the bell button to get notified regarding all my latest uploads. Thank you once again for watching this video. <clears throat> Until we meet next time, bye-bye.